Hi, so this video is uh, about Waset in Upper Egypt. It became a gnome during that 7th dynasty that I talked about at the beginning of the first intermediate period. So Waset is what the Greeks called Thebes and what's called Luxor today. And this town was made up of four main villages. You had Karnak, Medamud, Armant and Todd. And each one of those villages um, worshipped the same deity, which was the war god Montu. Now, at the beginning of this uh, first intermediate period, uh, a 9th and 10th dynasty family called the Kates in Middle Egypt declared themselves as kings. Manetho calls them nomarchs who proclaim themselves kings. He didn't see that they had a royal right. For a commoner to become king, they had to marry a royal princess. A royal princess or queen could empower a, a commoner with um, kingship. And Manetho doesn't seem to, uh, you know, why mention that they were no marks uh, if they had married princes, princesses or, or queens. So that he obviously felt that they had uh, worked outside the law. <clears throat> Excuse me. So as we see this first intermediate period, uh, the Kates uh, recalled that there, are, that there is famine in the country, that uh, people are eating children. Uh, and one of the Kates says in the script that he feeds the, uh, the uh, uh, starving children and, and the single mums, the, the widows who are on their own. So we know that the Kates are in Middle Egypt. Um, there is talk of incursions of Semitic people coming into the Delta. So maybe if there was a powerful nomad family in the Delta, they've got their hands full. In Waset, which is in Upper Egypt, this is the family of the Inyo, in, Inyotefs and the Montuhotefs. So um, they controlled the Waset gnome, maybe going up to the Katie's district and going down as far as uh, Thinus. There seems to be a powerful nomad family from Elephantine up to Thinus. So you've got four regional uh, powers uh, during this first intermediate period. Now, the problem, of course, is there's no central authority, no expeditions going to Lebanon to buy cedar wood. And they felt it bad in Waset because obviously um, Egypt has lots of date palm trees. They don't have many good solid trees for making furniture or rectangular coffins. So the Waset Egyptians came up with a solution. They cut down a date palm tree, they removed all the fibre from the inside, and then they put their relatives inside the hollowed uh, trunk. On the outside of the, uh, of the trunk, they carved the image of the dead person's face and body. Now, this is the birth of the anthropoid coffin. So, the reason why Tutankhamun and all the kings who were buried in the Valley of the Kings had an anthropoid coffin was because it was located at Waset. If they had been buried anywhere else in the country, they would have had a rectangular wooden coffin or maybe a wooden coffin covered in gold during that new kingdom they were well off. So that was one of the solutions in Waset was to cut down a date palm tree. Now we're talking about middle classes and no mark family. Okay, so the upper classes are very rich, wealthy middle class and definitely the upper class. But you can't keep cutting down these date palm trees. They're a source of uh, beautiful dates every October. Uh, so you can start losing a, a, a harvest of fruit. So another solution was after the mummification process was completed and the body was wrapped up with linen, was to cover the whole body in gypsum plaster. So you had a nice outer casing. And then on that casing, you painted a feathered design. Some people think it's the wings of the gold goddess Mart protecting uh, the dead person. Other people believe it's the wings of 
the vulture goddess Nick Hebet protecting the deceased person. Um, we don't know for sure, but that's the pattern that's on Tutankhamun's anthropoid coffins. So again, it originated in Waset. Now, um, uh, the type of burial that they practiced in Waset was what we call Safro uh, burials, Safro tombs. So they literally had a tomb next door to each other. And they usually built it on a, a, a natural landscape. And above the tombs, they would have a mud brick pyramid on each on the top of each tomb. So that's known as the Safro um, burials, which is very common throughout Egypt. But in, in Waset, they tended to put uh, a mud brick coffin on top. Now, the person who did the chronology for um, the Inyotef and Montuhotep family who lived at Waset was an American Egyptologist called Herbert Winlock. And Herbert Winlock worked for the Metropolitan Museum of Art and he arrived in Egypt from 1906 and he stayed there working and uh, uh, field work. So I'm not talking about uh, a jolly or a holiday. He worked extensively in Egypt until 1932. So the season in that time was you started excavating in October and you didn't finish until the end of April. Nowadays, an expedition is lucky if it gets 10 days a year because excavating in Egypt is very expensive and it's a lot stricter rules. In those days, if you found a tomb that had been plundered by tomb robbers, then anything that was left over was yours. So when Howard Carter found the tomb of Tutankhamun, he had proved it had been robbed twice in antiquity. He could have kept all those objects and brought them back to Britain. But himself and his benefactor, Lord Carnarvon, decided that this treasure of knowledge, not wealth, of knowledge, belonged to the Egyptian people. Uh, and I think, personally, they did the right thing. Now, so you've got these four powerful families. The problem they have is they don't have a big enough army to knock each other out or to conquer the whole country. So um, one of the uh, nomarchs in Waset uh, called Nebhepet Ra, uh, is also called Montuhotep, he had quite a few names. He sent out an advert to the land of Kush, what the Romans called Nubia. And it was wanted, bowmen, good rates of pay, no time wasters. And he recruited a large proportion of uh, bowmen, archers from Kush. And I'll tell you what, happened, what he did with those archers in, the, um, in my next video. So I hope it's given you some information, some useful information uh, about Waset and, and that gnome, because that gnome became so powerful in the New Kingdom. Um, and especially Karnak Temple, which was, then, um, which was dedicated to the god Amun-Ra, was probably the most powerful place in the Middle East at one time for about 500 years. So Waset is an important uh, uh, topic to talk about. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed it um, and I'll see you real soon. Bye for now.